If you watch this channel and do not know who Hans is, then do you really watch this channel? Hans is a conspiracy guy that literally believes in every single conspiracy that exists, and he even makes up some of his own. From sperm whales are a hoax, to why Satan fakes animals, and even CGI koalas deceiving the masses. Well, guess what? He's got a physics problem for Simon Dan fans. <laughs> Hello all and welcome along to another episode of Tin Four Tuesday with me, Simon Dan. Thank you very much for joining me. Before we begin today, a quick thank you to the sponsors of today's video, Surfshark VPN. Surfshark is a VPN service which makes online privacy protection easy and attainable. Encrypting all internet traffic sent to and from your devices and ensuring that your IP address remains hidden to make sure no one can see what you do online. On top of that, they block ads, trackers, malware and phishing attempts and unlike other VPN services, you can use it on as many devices as you like simultaneously. Doing the job I do, I spend a huge amount of time online, about six to eight hours per day. That's almost as much as I sleep. The internet knows a hell of a lot about you, which is why we should care about our online data. Now, have you ever seen an ad or banner which brought to mind a feeling that someone's reading your mind or listening in on your conversations? That is how your online data is being used against you and you can use Surfshark to become resistant to this sort of targeted advertising. Click on the link in the description or go to surfshark.deal slash simandan and use my code simandan to get a whopping 83% off and three months extra free. Right, back to today's video, where Hans has a physics problem for Simon Dan fans. Not my words, his. Shall we see what he's managed to muster up for us? Let's have a look. Hans Wormhat. This is kind of an interesting video, not something I've done before. Nothing like this. I think I'm inspired by all the Psy Dan fans that I have. Hans has Simon Dan fans? Awesome! And so here I'm going to present to you a kind of like a joke but also a math problem slash physics problem and so don't cheat don't give away the answer in the comments or don't go down and look at the comments and here we go here's the problem. A jokey maths and physics problem right okay let's hear it. So you have two cats and they live in a two-story house. So I'll draw it out as I explain. Oh my days, it's Hans's hand. Ooh. One of them lives upstairs and the other one lives downstairs. And both of them can stick their head out the window and see across the street where there's a street light. And the street light is equidistant from each cat. So here I should draw the cats. Exciting this, isn't it? Okay, and we're ready for the problem. This distance is the exact same as this distance. So if this is x, this is also x. Gotcha. Going good so far. Okay, now here's the question. When this street light turns on, both of the cats meow. And the question is, which cat hears the other cat's meow first? Hmm, interesting question. Let's hear the choices. Okay, so and so there's three answers, right? Either A, they hear each other's meow at the same time, or B, the upstairs cat hears the meow first, or C, the downstairs cat hears the meow first. Okay, I'm sure there's a technical answer to this, but at first glance, I'm going to say A. They both hear each other at the same time. I'll just explain it one more time and then give you a moment to pause and work on the problem if you want to. 
So there's two brother cats, and they live in a two-story house. One lives upstairs, one lives downstairs. When they stick their head out their window, they can see a street light across the street that's equidistant from both of them. Now, when the street light turns on, each cat meows when they see the street light turn on. Which cat hears the other cat meow first? Okay, now pause the video if you want to work on this. Don't cheat. Okay, well, I'm going to stick with my original answer, I think. The honor system, or if you're just interested in hearing the solution, just hang on. I'll give it a few seconds. Okay, so which cat hears the other cat meow first? It's the bottom stairs cat. Come on then, Hans, tell us all why. And here's the reason why. The distance between the bottom stairs cat ear and the top stairs cat's mouth is a shorter distance than the other way. The distance from the bottom cat mouth to the top cat ears is much bigger. So that's why the bottom cat hears the other one meow first. Okay, okay, let's figure this out. Now, let's assume for the sake of argument that both cats will be on the floor of their respective apartments. And let's say that, given normal buildings, there's a rough distance of about three meters between the two cats. The distance between a cat's ears and its mouth is, I did this earlier, I measured my cat Zeus, it's five centimeters. That means the sound from the downstairs cat has to travel an extra 10 centimeters roughly than the sound from the upstairs cat. Now, as we know, the speed of sound is 343 meters per second. And for the sake of argument here, we're gonna ignore the fact that the sound would, be, would act differently going through the different materials in the apartment's building. Put all that together, and it means that the downstairs cat's meow will reach the upstairs cat's ear in about 0.009 seconds. Meanwhile, the upstairs cat's meow will reach the downstairs cat's ears in about 0.0087 seconds. That means the cats would need to be able to notice a time difference of about three ten thousandth of a second. Now cats have got good hearing, but it's not that good. There you go. That's the joke slash physics problem slash math problem. For a minute here, I think Han sounds almost normal. I think it's just funny because it's... So I've listened to a lot of academia talks in my life. And almost all of them, you don't even understand anything that's going on, so who knows, it could just be all a bunch of BS or meaningless stuff that has no relevance to real life. Ah, he almost got there, didn't he? So let's refresh our memories and see what Hans is really about. Here he is talking about the koalas, which I mentioned at the beginning of the video. They, do you know what I'm talking about with the koala? How many th things about koalas there are? And then we get the over the top things like drop bears. Okay. It, it's all a joke about how koalas are mythological in nature. They aren't real. Sleep for 23 hours. They eat poison. They There's all sorts of things that they tell us about the koalas. They have the, the smallest brain. It's like a smooth brain. And I think that they're making fun of people. You're smooth brained if you don't catch on to the joke that koalas are not real. Now, I'm sure a lot of you out there have seen a koala in real life. I certainly have and it definitely looked real to me. Now, let's get into it. That's my overview. Uh, baby koalas are called joeys. Look here, they, they love talking about this. A koala joey is the size of a jelly bean. Jelly beans is 33 in Pythagorean, and also koala joeys is 33 in Pythagorean. I feel like everything is 33 in Pythagorean gematria. I'm 33 for one, Simon Dan. Hans is okay is 33 as well, and so is Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Interesting. Let's start the video. Just, I'll probably pause it and just tell you about the things that I think, and then I took some still frames too. But notice how frequently the camera cuts, the cinematic cuts, the watch, the prominence of the watch. That is really awkward to me because, so I'm just going to start it over because the way that this person picks up the koala is so awkward and in Hollywood, they show us what they do. This person is probably interacting with a 
I think they use like the color blue for this type of thing most often, like a blue fake stuffed animal. And then they come in and they CGI in the koala later. And they have all sorts of movies out there. Life of Pi is a perfect example of they CGI in a, a, a tiger next to a human actor. That's all this is. This is an actor. But as good as that CGI looks in films like The Life of Pi, you can still kind of tell that it's CGI. In this clip with the koala here, it looks totally real. And it is an actor, if you know what I mean. So awkward. Was it? Didn't look very awkward to me. And the lighting is so off. The koala is very sharp. This was another super awkward. That looks very awkward. But like I said, very high quality, right? A lot of, it looks like something out of Hollywood with professionals working on this. All the cinematic cuts. Yeah, no, that's totally real. You can't be telling me that that koala has been CGI'd into this video. And as I've said before, I have seen a koala with my own eyes, and I'm sure many of you have as well. And this is the sort of stuff that Hans brings to the table regularly. Let's leave Hans there for today, but I'm sure, in fact, I'm positive, he will be making an appearance again soon. Thank you all so much for watching today. That's it for today's Dim for Tuesday. It really is appreciated that you do watch these videos. If you enjoyed it, then please do consider subscribing to the channel. Uh, and also, if you really enjoyed it, please hit the like button as well. Just enough time to once again thank Surfshark for sponsoring today. Remember, visit surfshark.deals slash simandan and use my code simandan to get 83% off and three months extra free. I've been Simon Dan, have yourselves a great day and I'll be back tomorrow for more of the Flat Earther comments. See you then.